man doesn't have anything but his word. Mm. It's all you got that you can control is your word, you know? And so when he wanted to go to one school and he said and he had pledged himself to another, I said, you can't do that, son. You gave your word, you know? And he said, yeah, dad, but so and so and so. But he did the right thing, you know? And I, you know, you can only teach kids, but so much without a movement, you know, like I tell them, I said, man, you know, you got to dance with who brought you to the party, son. Huh? Fidelity. Fidelity is important. Mm. You see, you have to be true to your own principles. You have to be true to your word. Sometimes you can't be. It's not, be but it ain't because you didn't try. Ebonic barbaric hieroglyphs, I spit my gifts, shift the surface with the lack of the skill, the raw is near, touching down like meteors, none other than black gods, stones in my timepiece coming from black stars, negativity far, keep far away from doors, single-mindedly destroying the ops and the odds, just another warrior's quest, the past make it rest, demons coming for my crown, get beheaded like the next, these blessings never threats, just to verbalize the message, catching energy to create all the Atari get dead it. Pray I stay alert on the field Be schematic And anything my enemies deal Be dead actions I proceed this life I lead Beneath it so many seas The wind is our time To align stars to spirits lead Who can war with me Catastrophically or audibly Given no choice by God's law I'm Lucifer on streets So um, You, you, you kind of uh, Brother Daruba, you kind of uh, hinted at it or touched on it, but um, art, I'm, I'm an artist, and so I tend to see and to express and to interpret everything visually. I'm a visual artist, um, so it's always played a real significant role for me personally in my involvement in the movement over the years. Can you kind of reflect, you know, in, in my head, the Harlem Renaissance was to that time period to Garvey and everything that was going on, what hip hop was to our generation. Not the co-opted, you know, hip hop music that they say, but what hip hop actually is, the the, the, the music and the, the, the b-boys and the, the graffiti writers and the, 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 the poets and, 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 and all of the, the culture. Can you kind of touch on how you and the party and the movement um, any, anywhere in there in its relationship with art while you were in your, I want to call it the, the, the active days, for lack of a better phrase, but um, back in the days when uh, um, you all had boots on the ground and things were moving, what, as you see it, what was the significance um, to the party, to you, to the movement in general? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Um, revolutionary art. The art that inspires people to take control over their lives and in the reality and that reflects their reality is as, as essential as, as any other aspect of, of struggle. It's very, very important because people do think in terms of images and can see images. If you look at the art of Emory, of Emory back in the days of the party, that reflected that. But I want to say something. Our movement had a soundtrack. All movements have a soundtrack, bro. You know, like I tell, like, like, like I tell my kids, I said, you know, when my janazah, when y'all have my funeral, this is the version of a change that's going to come. I want, I want sung at my funeral, okay. And and, and that move, and that song came out of a movement. You know, the Sam Cooks, the the Harry Belafonte's, they supported the movement. They didn't, you, you understand what I'm saying? The artists supported the movement. If you look at Romeo Beard and his art reflected the urbanization of black people. I mean, his, 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 if you look at some of his pictures, man, of, 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 of black folks dancing in the old sawdust on the floor nightclub, you see, you could see the people, the way they was leaning, you could, they was like moving and they, they were pictures. You see, so art is very, very important to express a people's willingness of to be free, their desire to be seen as 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 progressive as beautiful. You know, we had songs back then. That's why I call Curtis Mayfield the poet laureate of the '60s. You know, listen to his music and listen to what he says. 
I mean, whenever the Black Panther Party used to be finished with a day of organizing in the street and selling newspapers, we would get together and and we would play songs like the Dells always together. You know? And if you go listen to those oldies, always together, power to the people. You know, all of these songs were the soundtrack of our movement. You see, that's when black folks used to actually dance together. Now they dance by themselves. You see? So hip hop started, you know, where I grew up in the South Bronx, right? And 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 it began, you know, with young brothers and sisters, you understand, taking taking the music of their parents, scratching the records, you know, rapping over the beat. You understand? Listen, to, man. Listen, come on, man. Listen to some of the beats that 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 came out of that that that, that came out of uh, the Funkadelics and 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 P Funk and JB. You know, these are listen to the bass line and some of these things. They make you move. And what do they make you move to? You know, listen to you 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 know what's the name um, that made that song? Was Shotgun? Shoot him before you run now. <laughs> you know, but we used to get in a line to that song and be breaking down, quack, 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 shoot them for you, run now. You see, movements have soundtracks. <clears throat> you know, they have visual art. Art is so important to 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 to, to building the consciousness and the perspectives and the values of a movement. You see, now with hip hop, the problem was that once these crackers understood the value and the and the um, and the and the detriment to the, for them of 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 that genre of art, they threw money at it. Yep. They threw money at these kids, and these kids was you know they were so broke they couldn't pay attention, so they ain't never had no money. Yeah, so these crackers is throwing two hundred fifty thousand dollars at them for a signing. You understand? They driving around now in slick cars that they didn't have. You know, look at these country kids coming out of Atlanta, man. They was always funny in country to me. You know, I was I'm from New York, so they was always country. But these dudes is riding on dubs, man. They got, come on, man. Look at look look at look at your homeboy Snoop. Snoop's an icon. This dude is on every he, he's in everything but a mini skirt. This dude's he I mean he's on he's on NFL commentaries. He's on you know the Price is Right. You understand? <laughs> I mean, this dude is everywhere. You understand? So so how did he go from from being a crip or a blood or whatever the case may be? You understand? NWA to where he's at. The mainstream media, Hollywood, has always had an interest in in, in pimping black culture and, and and turning it away from its revolutionary roots. Look at the black exploitation movies from the from the 60s. You see, all the black exploitation movies come up with what? They come up with the bad black cop or the bad black gangster who wants to get out of the drug game. And then who does he go to in the in the most of the movies? There's this. There's this room or the storefront where the black militants are. You understand? Anybody sitting in there, they, they, you know, they got stone faces and black berets on. They talk about why should we help you, brother? You see, talking to the cop, the black cop. You see, so so you have to understand that that the the, the movie of your gener the, the 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 music of your generation was your soundtrack, but you didn't have a movement. You see, and and you know you had a sound, you you, you had a dance, but you ain't had no steps. <laughs> uh -huh. you, had a, you had a song, you ain't had no melody. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And and so it was easily co-opted, you know. But that doesn't mean for brothers like you who grew up with that music that that didn't touch your soul. That, that you still don't feel the, the the revolutionary fervor or or the desire for change that, that that music inspired in you when you were a kid. You see, nobody could take that away from you. You see, and hopefully you could see how it was moved away from how it, its beginnings. You know, listen to the music that when the, in the beginnings the Public Enemies and the and uh, um, X Clan and and, KRS. and oh, yeah, KRS. And in fact, I'm going to see KRS Saturday because my man Hakim Green is uh, is performing at the Apollo 
here in Harlem on Saturday. I was just talking to, and I raised this kid, you know, um, Hakim, you know, and and I'm I'm proud of the I'm proud of the young men that I've I've been able to influence, you know, and because they turned out to be some great, 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 great men, great human beings, you know, and and they've gone on to teach to be teachers. They've gone on to do whatever, you know, that they do. But they always had that. They always got that part that that I had hoped that they would grasp. And that's that understanding that we have to raise a generation of freedom fighters. We have to instill in our people a desire to want to rise above whatever is thrown at us. And art is important for that, whether it's the graffiti on the trains, you know, that, that you could watch the subway train go by with a black fist thrust in the air and two box pitching next to it. You understand, it's putting it in the mind, say, oh man, yeah, that's right, black power. You see what I'm saying? To ordinary sap going to work with his head down, he look up at the train and that's what he sees. And he would say, damn, I remember when I was, you see? You can't take these things from a people, man. And, and so art is very important. So I think that, you know, you you shouldn't you, you shouldn't give up on 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 your artistic expression as a revolutionary duty as a revolutionary job i mean it's the same thing i say to teachers you know um if you're not turning out uh, uh um students who question and, and 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 try to strive to change things then you're not really teaching much you see that's why I said, now, you notice when I talked to you about when I was growing up and my love for history, it came from a black history teacher. You see, may Allah be pleased with it. Now, I remember his name to this day, Mr. Larson. And I'm 77 years old, you see. So don't underestimate the influence you impact you could have on young minds with art, you know, really don't. And those who think that it's it's of inconsequence. I mean, I think you could look around if, if I could spin this thing around and you could see all of this artwork. Let me show you. Look, you see? You see all of this artwork. You see? Art. Hmm? It is what it is, bro. We got to have images of ourselves as a free people. We have to envision and reimagine what life can be like. And, and, and celebrate who we are, you know? We need to celebrate our survival. We survived all of this shit to get here. And it ain't and it wasn't easy. And like I tell folks, you know, I'm old now. And I said, man, getting old ain't for punks, man. <laughs> and damn, but man, when you be at, we have to handle them bag aches and you're getting up and you can't move it fast. I mean, I was on the train today with a dude that, you know, that was, that was you know, my, my little bag hit his leg. He talked about, he stopped cussing me out and stuff and calling me all kinds of pieces and shit. This was a black dude, black kid. So I said, man, I hope that I don't have to take this, take this four inch knife and bury it in his neck, you know, before I get off this train, you know? And I ain't say nothing, you know? But he didn't know who he was talking to, you know? He was crazy, he's mad as shit. You see, he's driven crazy by this place. You see, and when we don't have a movement, there's nothing, there's nothing to hold on to, man. It's like a slippery deck. You know, the ship is tilting and you ain't got nothing to hold on to. You're gonna slide right off in the, into, the, into the ocean, man, into the water. So yeah, art is, um, art is crucial. All forms, whether it's dance, whether it's visual, whether it's music, whether it's acting, it's all very, very important. Sure. <clears throat> well, um, I got, I got, I, I, I think we got to wind this up. I, I think I ran over time. What yeah, time? we got to longer. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Do we, um, um, are we able to get you back on at, at some point? I mean, you dropping nothing but jewels, and and uh, the young audience need to need to hear that, especially the. The whole reconnection, you know, with the elder, the middle generation, and, and, and the youth. And I think that's super important, especially just for where I'm coming from in regards to uh, working on that, trying to get the uh, the elders to pass along things so that the younger generation ain't reinventing wheels. 
I mean, when you said that, you hit it right on the head, brother. That 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 touched hard with me. Yeah, we reinventing failure, man. We done been there and did this. How many times we got to fight for the right to vote, man? God damn. You know, this, this is like this is like Sisyphus in the mountain, man. <laughs> you know, as soon as we get near the top, we just slide back down. I mean, we we still talking, but now we talking about voting. I mean, you talking about naming a voting rights act. After, what was that bootlicker's name? Um, the ball-headed bootlicker that just died. What was his name? That shoe polish lip nigga. What's his name? Um, <laughs> Used to be a snit. Um, oh, um, Lewis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that, okay. That that bootlegger. Yeah. You know, and 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 I mean, you just got if you just study his evolution, you could see that the minute that King was killed, and where King was killed, and when he was killed, everybody that around him went for themselves. They went down their political careers. They, yeah. you know, Jesse became, you know, the head of operation push, getting black faces and corporations. Lewis went went into politi politics, you know, um, what's that, Andrew Young. They all ran away from what, what King was saying. And what was King saying then? He was in Memphis to support sanitation workers. Garbage, man. Poor people's campaign. Right. King had arrived at a class analysis of understanding that the working black man, the working black class, the black working had to be supported and empowered. That that's where the power was. Okay. He was murdered, and everybody that was with him, they ain't do shit for black workers since. You see, they went on to empower their little elites and well-educated class. You see. And so, you know, if you just, you could just, I mean, there's, there's, there's countless examples out there. Almost every every one of those Negroes that came out of uh, the war on poverty and that became black capitalists and became the black leaders of, of, of the early 70s, they all endorsed the war on drugs. They all endorsed mass incarceration. Now they feel guilty about it. The old timers, they feel guilty about it, you know. And but who was leading that charge? The Bill Clintons, the Joe Bidens, the same crackers right now that they're telling us that we should vote for are the ones that instituted that against our people and filled the prisons up with us for a useless war on drugs. That now they declare that was a failure. And in fact, they illegalized the drugs that they wage a war on now. Mm -hmm. So so we need to really understand, you know, that we've been there and did this. You see? And 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 uh, I mean, I, I, I maybe I, I talk a little too much. Um, uh, but I hope I answered your question about art. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and, and I like the, the, the way that you, you put it. I, I guess I've heard it, but to be reminded that, yeah, and, and most deaf even kind of uh, touched on it in one of his earlier records that if you want to know where hip hop is going, look where the people are and you know, where are the people going, you know, what are the people doing? Because it's, the art is at once a reflection of as well uh, of where we are yeah. as well as a vision of where we could go. I mean, all uh, most most of when you look at hip hop now or, or rap now, it's all narcissistic. Mm hmm. And, and, and that's where generally everything is going. Everybody wants to be a star for a moment. You go on TikTok and, you know, everybody's doing their own thing on Instagram. You see what I'm saying? So it's very hard to build a cohesive movement. Everybody got an opinion about something based on their limited knowledge of everything. So there's there's no there's no center of gravity for any of this because there's no movement. You see? And just you saying that confirms because we've said we've had that exact same conversation that you know bringing the people together but 99 percent of our day we're being taught to go apart to be mm -hmm. individuals and not be cohesive so that's the main thrust that we're you know that that that, that movement is a movement away that's that's yeah that's that's a consequence of capitalism and consumerism we're all consumers uh, that's say a that again that's a consequence of capitalism and consumerism, you yes, know, and, 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 and I mean, 
that's 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 what it is you know we want to get the slickest car we all want to be fast we all want to be known we all want to be a star you know i mean this is why somebody like a punk ass will smith slap some slap <laughs> slap slap homeboy you understand and and now and he's and now he's purged from the from the actors guild and they exacting all these they making will smith look like some type of you know parrot but everybody know he was fronting you know i mean come on man he's an actor that's what actors do yeah you see now that doesn't mean that he might not have had genuine feelings as a as a man or or whatever but he knew he was on stage he knew what was going to happen if he didn't then he ain't the will smith that got all this money because he's been signing contracts you understand he's getting well paid and all of this stuff and 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 so what i'm trying to say is is that um, there's no such thing as art for art's sake. All art is political. You see, and 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 this is why you see most of the most of the artists that are celebrated today from from the Middle Ages or from or from um, from Europe, you know, 17th and 16th century Europe, they all were starving artists at the time. They had to get a patron. You see. Look at Modigliani and and, and 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 all of these all of these artists that now they paintings cost millions and millions of dollars, but back then they could man they couldn't even get a fish sandwich. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So so there's no such thing as art for art's sake. All art reflects the ideals and the values of a particular class, or it's in rebellion to those ideals and values of a particular class of society. So I, I just want to say, man, I got I got to run now, you know. Um, I really appreciate talking to uh, to you. I, I just hope that it's been of value and you're able to use it, yes, um, use our discussion. And and yeah, I'm I'm willing to try to come on again. Um, I miss Aaron. I was hoping Aaron would be on. Uh, I'm sure really next time we do that, we 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 get y'all both on for certain. Yeah, but just tell Aaron, man, that he was the, one of the reasons why I came on, and he didn't come on, man. He left me hanging. <laughs> you know? Oh, brother the Ruble, before you leave, you mind if I ask you a question? What's that, son? Because you touched on a, you touched on a few things, and I'm gonna kind of tie them together. And you talked about how art, basically, how art is the soundtrack of the movement at the time. And I grew up in the '80s. I was born in the '70s, but I grew up in the '80s, and as you said, we didn't have a movement in the community. There was no movement. There was nothing that we could actually look at that was positive that would lead us to the direction where we needed to go when I was growing up, when I was coming of age, when I stepped up the porch. So the things that, that caught my attention, because I was just like any other uh, young black male, I was looking for manhood. I was trying to find my way in the world. And the things I had to look at was the gangsters and the drug dealers. Those were the ones that seemed like they had they 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 had things together. They had some type of control, some type of power. Mm -hmm. And it kind of goes back to what George Jackson said. I can't remember, so I'm gonna paraphrase it, but he basically said, when the uh <clears throat> when the rebel rebels, when the robber robs, when basically when any when any aspect of society does anything that seems counter to society, is because they're 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 basically uh subscribing to that atavistic throwback that desire for power the desire for freedom and they can feel it in some way but they don't know how to go about getting it so they might knock somebody upside the head and start robbing they well, might start well i was like that too you know when i grew up i would rather slap a cracker in his face and punch his time clock you yeah. know but you know i grew up the same way but that that just taught me um that just gave me the basics to be a good urban gorilla you see and uh, could get my ass kicked in the bot in the, in 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 the in, in the basement of Fort Apache, you know, getting caught playing hooky from school and chained up to a goddamn radiator and cack of slacking me around, you know, made me understand exactly what the role of the police were. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And 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 so you know, I understand that they are our enemy, but then that led me to understand that we're in a state of war. Yeah. You see, as I grew older. But now what you're saying 
is 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 very important because when young folks grow up, whether they're men or women, you know, they're socialized into into the they're socialized into the behavior patterns and what's acceptable and unacceptable in society. You know, um, um, it said um, I think it's Marx said that um, a man's social being determines his thinking. You mm. see, yeah. and 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 so. You know, when you when you're coming up and you're at a certain age, you're looking for you're looking for uh, examples that fit your 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 character, your idea. You know, and this may come from watching movies, and you think, well, man, I want to be like this, or I want to be like a Bumpy Johnson, or I wanted to be like the dope sling on him, because he's always slick, he's always laid out, he's chilling and cool. Police don't give him no tickets, and when the police do give him tickets, he have the hoes pay for it. You see what I'm saying? So you say, damn, I won't be like him. Yeah. You, you, you see what you see what I'm saying? But um that's that's that that's natural. But but it's because it's because the um the subculture of the street and of 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 what what we illegitimate capitalism, because that's what that is. That's illegitimate capitalism. Yeah. You see, if he if if he would have had the opportunity to go to to uh, to uh, to a to a tier one uh, college, he might have been running a corporation. Yeah, uh, you see, and and but he didn't. So he made so he did what he did where he did it, and and it was against the law, and he was you know he was riding with it. You see what I'm saying? And to the young kids coming up, you know they see the slick car, they see all the beautiful sisters, and and he's slick. You understand the police don't fuck with him. You understand because they're on the payroll. You know, so that's power. You see, and um, uh, you know when I when there was a movement, see them them dudes had to contribute to the movement. Yeah. Because that's what we used to do. We used to, I mean, when I start when I grew up, you know, I, you know, personally, you know, when I grew up from gang banging and stuff, I I was a stick up kid. You see, and so I used to stick up the after hours spots. I used to stick up the gangsters. Yeah, because I didn't. I I could. I didn't like to gamble because I would. Because I would lose if I lost. I wouldn't. I didn't like to lose like that. <laughs> I would stick up the gambling spots, so I always won. And them dudes used to hate me, man. And they, <laughs> they, they used to say, "If they catch that nigga, man, you know, <laughs> you know, cut his fingers off or whatever." You see what I'm saying? But and then you got some brothers that grew up you know in that same environment and they became poets mm -hmm. you know they 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 became you know it, it had the opposite effect on them you know they were determined to 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 to, to be that but in a different way to, to exercise that power and control over their personal life so this is why the movement a movement is so important yeah. Because it puts that in context. I mean, when we used to sell Black Panther Party newspapers, we used to sell them to the gangsters. And you know, the gangster can't buy one newspaper, man. You got to buy the whole. You gonna buy the whole stack? Yeah, yeah. And so we go into the pool hall. We go into the pool hall, the after hours spot, sell Panther papers. Just go, come on, come on over here, blow. How many papers you got there? I got twenty. Man, get everybody a paper, man. And throw us a fifty. Yeah, you know. The dope fiends, the dope fiends, they would say, man, we got some, we just robbed this train, man. You, 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 want, you want to buy this? And they'd be, they be giving us, they be selling us guns. Yeah. Well, you got you Panthers are, man. I know you all want that top of the line shit, that automatic shit. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it was a movement. Yeah. So even the criminals in the community felt an obligation to do something other than prey on their own people. And then when they did that, then there was the movement and it was us they had to deal with because we wouldn't allow them to prey on our own people. You see? Yeah. And 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 so when you don't have a movement, when you don't have that type of energy circulating in the community, the criminals become, you know, they just become some, you know, some outrageous bandit you know, that, that just prays and murders their own people. You know, I mean, when heroin hit the black community, bro, it was terrible. I'm telling you, brothers that I grew up with, they used to, I mean, these dudes would kill a dead tree, man. 
I grew up some people they had names like Graveyard and Tombstone. Look what nigga got yeah. a name named Tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, who gonna name himself Tombstone? Yeah. But when that heroin hit, homeboy be nodding, sucking his own dick, man. I said, God damn, that's Tombstone. Man, he got somebody else to get something. Damn. They mm. broke him. Yeah. And this was the dude I used to say, man, this dude was, man, this dude strike terror and, and look at him, man. He's a, a dope fiend. Mm. So, the, so, so when that heroin hit, it was hit to do that. You see, it was put there to do that. Mass incarceration and, and it did what it did to a whole generation. I mean, I remember, <laughs> See y'all, I don't know if y'all know this, but you know, wearing your pants around your ass came from prison. Yeah. And the reason, and when I say that, because I used to, I, I, it, it came from, because usually when you went on a visit in prison, you went on a visit, you know, they stripped you. You strip search you coming back, going out and coming back, you had to strip. Yeah. And usually when the visit was over, it was right before the yard closed. So the brothers coming out the, off the visit would run out to the yard with all the good news about what's happening and all of this shit in the street. And they still getting dressed. They still got their pants hanging around their ass. And so you know they got a visit. So it was a status symbol. They took that shit to the street. Niggas walking around the street now with their pants around their kneecaps. So this is how, this is how negative culture, negative uh, behavior gets institutionalized and then glorified and then becomes something that that that's 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 part of the culture. You you, you see, yeah. you know, um, like I say, you know, you, when you ask, you know, like 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 the sister here tells me, she, she says, uh, she says, you know how you all used to say in jail when because I get outraged about something. She said, drink plenty of water and walk slow, right? And, and when you and when you when you listen to what did they tell you about hydrating? <laughs> what did they tell you? One of the major uh, 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 things to do in order to keep your body healthy: drink plenty of water and walk slow. Yeah. <laughs> and and this was just like the old timers used to say in the joint. Cause I used to be young. I'd be running through the joint, going out to the yard, slinging iron. I said, "What's happening, old man? Oh, gee, what's going on? Drink plenty of water, walk slow, blood." <laughs> that's, what they, that's what they used to tell you. No. But you would think that was just the slogan, yeah. you know? But the, you see how certain things become part of the culture, like, like you know, like the term, you know, you get what your hand called for. Yeah. You see? So what was the response? I ain't got no hand, man. I got two nubs. <laughs> you <laughs> understand? So, so what I'm saying, these sayings, these cliches come out of growing up and being part of a subculture we know what they mean you, yeah. you you understand what i'm saying and movements lend meaning to things yeah they change the orientation so you would sit back if like if you would have had a movement you might have said damn i don't want to be like him i want to be like them panthers over there or or so and so man because he'd be serving them crackers man you see what I'm saying? And those people in power don't want to fuck with him. That's 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 my model. You see, not the number runner. You see what I'm saying? And and so when you don't have a movement, when you don't have anything of social value, you know, around you, you grow up and you got to find your own way. And in the consumer society, they tell you this is what's a value. This is what makes a person wealthy. You know, so you worship money. So the first time these kids get a contract, you know, hip hop kids get a contract, man. I mean, you know, he's good to go. But now you look at this drill shit. These dudes is on Facebook. Talk about how they're gonna kill somebody. Then after they kill him, they go back on Facebook and wonder how they got busted. Yeah. I mean, I remember, come on, man. You on Facebook with an Uzi. You understand what I'm saying? And then they got you on the on the camera on the on the public footage camera at the at the filling station shooting homeboy with your Uzi and you wonder how you got busted? Yeah. 
they telling them they sell. <laughs> dry snitching. Yeah. Dry, dry snitching has become a substitute for snitching. You know? So, I mean, I mean, <laughs> That's just a whole nother story about, yeah. about how, how dry snitching become became accept, acceptable. You know, but brothers are dry snitching on themselves. You see? Yeah. So, you know, it's you, you're gonna value those individuals, those 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 uh, symbols of empowerment that surround you that you see. You see, that's one of the reasons why I'm you know I'm so. I'm so blessed to have my son going to college as a, as a football player on a scholarship. He's going through an experience that I never had, you know, but I'm not imposing my values and my struggle on him. He's living his dream. He's living his own, you know, he's running his own race. And my job is to get him to the starting line True in life so he, could, so he could run his own race. True indeed. You see? And I just hope some of the shit that I've been telling him, he'll take it to mind. You know, like I, I teach, try to teach him. A man doesn't have anything but his word. Mm. It's all you got that you can control is your word. You know. And so when he wanted to go to one school and he said he had pledged himself to another, I said, right. you can't do that, son. You gave your word. You know. And he said, yeah, dad, but so and so and so. But he did the right thing. You know, and I, you know, you can only teach kids, but so much without a movement. You know, like I tell them, I said, man, you know, you got to dance with who brought you to the party, son. Fidelity, fidelity is important. Mm. You see, you have to be true to your own principles. You have to be true to your word. Sometimes you can't be. It's not, be, but it ain't because you didn't try. There you go. 